there! This is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com. I'm the mom of 15, been homeschooling for over 30 years, and today I have a special strategy to share with you for large family homeschooling, and that is to put your school on autopilot. Would that be fun? <laughs> Stay tuned. So, what I'm going to talk to you today is uh, to answer a question that everyone asks me, and that is, how do you keep up with homeschooling multiple ages and multiple levels at the same time, especially if you have babies and toddlers? Now, I know in general we say combine subjects, and that's really important because you can combine things like history and science and art. You can just really explore together and have a great, great fun time. But when it comes to the basic academics, it's kind of hard to do that, right? Because when you have kids that are just learning to read and then you have other kids that are needing to learn how to write an essay, how do you put all that together? I mean, how can you do that all at the same time? Now, you can practice that all at the same time when you study history and like you do a notebooking page and everybody does their notebooking page at their own level. That totally works. However, when you're trying to give your child the basics of how to write, how to do basic math, you know, those things need to be taught separately. And, and what would frustrate me when I was first, um, you know, my first years of homeschooling when I was researching is that everybody suggested that workbooks were not the way to go, but they would always concentrate on the content areas and then forget about the fact that most of my kids couldn't read or write. So how did that help me? And so what I ended up doing is, I ended up focusing on content, I neglected the basic academics, and then everybody, like, we had a lot of fun exploring, but when it came to do the writing and, the, and everything, it, would just, it just became very frustrating. And, like, I would expect them to be able to write about what we had just read together or explored together, but they had no idea where to start, or if they did, there were a lot of spelling mistakes and that type of thing. So today I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to reiterate to you some things I've introduced in other um, videos where I talked about what true education is and we're going to go over the strategy of how to do that so it's autopiloted so it leaves you more time for the fun stuff. Okay, so here I'm going to show you my blackboard. So as you can see, I've outlined here the basic elements of a true excellent education. And number one is the child in relationship with God and man. That covers uh, spirituality and character issues. Okay. So you want to give a good foundation for your child in that, and that's priority number one. I know that we were taught in school that that's something relegated for Sunday or in your own personal life, but education is something totally different. But let me tell you, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And who was the wisest person ever lived? That was King Solomon, and he wrote that. So I, I suggest that the first priority of any school day or any school curriculum or whatever it is, is that you make sure your child is grounded in the things of the Lord and character training according to the things of the Lord. Now, of course, they're going to have to have their own relationship with God. They're going to have to develop this on their own eventually. But when they're younger, you've got to train them. You've got to train them not to listen to their appetites. You know, I'm talking about, you know, things like I wanted their impulsiveness is basically it. So that's number one. Number two is the tools of learning. Now, this is reading, writing, and arithmetic you know that in our current age this is often neglected. Number three is content. This is all of the, the knowledge, the facts, the, the way the world works, the way history is, it happened, and um, all that kind of stuff. That's all content. You know, even art, even the arts. You know, um, music, art, everything like that is content. Now, application and life skills, of course, is the other part that's very important, and that's where we take all the things we've learned and we apply them to real life, such as when we get a job, when we help around the house, when we deal with relationships. That's what that part is, and no education is complete without that. Would you agree? So, what happens generally, as I was talking about, we tend to think that school is all about content, and then we tend to neglect the number one and number two. So what I suggest is that if you have a large family and you're doing many, many different ages at once, that you put content very last. And the next thing you want to do is you want to think about how can I make the uh, spiritual and the academic part of our lives the most important, okay? Now, how, how is that possible? How is it possible to have an excellent education and put content 
on the last run. I don't want to tell you how. It's because once your children can read and write effectively and they understand math effectively on their own, they can pretty much teach themselves the rest. And I'm telling you, once they really get really versed in reading and writing, I mean, they can take off, okay? And uh, also, um, if you have, all, and if you autopilot the academics, then the time you have left over, then you can concentrate on exploring the fun things, the nature, the, the history, you know, do some unit study type activities and, and watch some videos and all that. You'll have more time for that and it'll be more concentrated time and everyone will be more satisfied. Okay, and then when you add in things such as notebooking, everybody's going to understand their different levels and they're going to be able to operate in those. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So, there are some ways that you can autopilot this part of your homeschooling. Now, when I first started homeschooling, I, I understood that in our public school system, by and large, what we had done is we took and we, autom we, we made kids feel as though they're machines and we just fed them information, fed them information, and, or either that or we expect them to perform at certain stages and do X, Y, and Z. And so what it did is it turned learning to a horrible, hateful thing and we don't want to do that. That's not what I'm talking about. But if we look at it from the perspective of if we concentrate on just giving them some tools, then the rest of learning can be like eating ice cream, okay? Right? So um, I'm going to show you one of the tools that I use and I showcased this in my last video where I went on and on and on forever with no, with no explanation because I tried voicing over and my computer kept crashing. So that's why I couldn't do it. But anyway, so let me show you one of the tools that I use for automation. And here it is. I don't know if you can see it. This is my assignment sheet. Now this is free for downloading and printing for if you need to use it. Um, you can, you can make your own, you can get one online, whatever works for you. This is one that I developed for us and it works. And what I have is each person, I give them a sheet and, and I have two weeks worth on a sheet at a time so that I can save paper. You can do double sided if you wanted to. Um, but what this does is it gives me a place to put things that my children can do without me being uh, constantly needing to oversee everything they do. Okay, on here I have the McGuffey readers and the consequent. Uh, here I have the McGuffey readers and the sequential work that they do in those. I have gr grammar and everybody does their own different kind of grammar. I have math and I have I do have science reading. Now here's another thing that you have to understand: if your children are able to read on their own and write at their particular level on their own then you can still automate some of their science, especially, or history. And what I try to do here is I'm trying to give them uh, science in the area of their expertise and of their area of their passion, or as some home homeschoolers have said, the area of their delight. So I am giving them their, the science that feeds them so that when they're studying this science, it's not like, you know, read a chapter and do the questions or do the exercises and you just have to do it, just accept it. No, no, no. This is the science that they really want to know. I have a daughter who's in love with the human body. Everything about it she wants to know. So I have bought things that help her to understand that. And they're not necessarily curriculum. They're things that I gathered that are books of interest that we can take advantage of using the Charlotte Mason method, using notebooking, right? So. She reads, she narrates to me orally, she colors, a, a, bought an anatomy book, Gray's Anatomy, uh, Gray's Anatomy coloring book specifically, and that's what you saw, saw in my last video. If you want to go back and watch it and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But I hand that off to her, it's something she does on her own and she loves it. So then I've got science is done, right? <laughs> and um, then, then if you think about it, then also she's practicing those other areas while she's doing that. So she's practicing her reading, she's practicing her vocabulary, she's practicing um, her writing skills, everything. Okay, and then also I have an area which I call, I have labeled SR, which for me reads, self, means self-read. So the self-read I give them uh, depends on where they're at and what they're doing. I might assign something just for the beauty of literature. They need to get in touch and they need to be uh, familiar with really excellent literature. And sometimes I might assign them a, like a character book. Um, like one of my daughters is reading Beautiful Girlhood. 
And so that's, she, and she loves that book. She says she wishes it was a million chapters. She loves every chapter, which is really sweet. So she's enjoying that. And then um, for another, another then two daughters, I've got them reading um, R.M. Ballantyne books. Um, that Those are like history and geography and um, all kinds of stuff all rolled into one. So they're really enjoying that. And there's also a, a Christian value and character um, theme throughout all those books. So there's so much they're covering just by reading to themselves. So you see, if I assign them so many pages or a chapter a day or whatever, then they are taking care of the things that I don't have to sit and chase them over. Do you see? Now, however, there is a group time when we all get together and then I am able to open up my heart. I'm able to enthuse them, you know, put in, put something of God's enthusiasm in them for different subjects such as U.S. history, which sometimes can be a little dry, and if you assign things to people, I mean, I, there's some really interesting stuff on heritage history and stuff like that, but it's just kind of fun to sit and we'll read through it together and enjoy it. Another thing we're doing, which I highly suggest, especially if you have kids coming into their teens, is uh, the video seri series by Francis Schaeffer called How Should We Then Live? That will explain a lot about our culture. It'll be so amazing. And then it goes from Rome, to the Middle Ages, to the Renaissance, and beyond that. So I think you really, really like it. Something to do with teens. We just sit and we watch it, we take notes, and then we discuss uh, the film afterwards. We're watching it on YouTube for free. I can link that below. And so um, that's like group time, like, okay, we have Bible declarations, or we'll talk about general Bible knowledge, or we'll read a chapter of the Bible together, and we just take the Bible, and that's what we study. God, we don't have to have uh, curriculum or anything. We just sit and we just enjoy God's Word together. That's my favorite thing. And then, I, like I said, we do history and sometimes, lots of times I get a read aloud that's not really attached to anything else and I'll read that aloud. Or I'll read U.S. history and we'll just talk about U.S. history and we'll go through that. So many, many, many different ways to do it, but that's our group time. And some people call it morning time, sometimes call it basket time, morning basket time, whatever you call it. That's when we get together and do that. And that takes me usually a max of an hour a day. And then the rest, I've turned over to automation. Except for math. Sometimes I have to take about half an hour and sit the, sit people at the table and go over their math with them. Because sometimes they get in a tricky spot. And that's just fine with me. I don't mind. So maybe a max of an hour and a half is what I spent. Now just think about your life as a mom of many children. You've got little babies and toddlers and you've got to make dinner and you've got to go grocery shopping and you've got to take people places. Can you imagine if all of the homeschool you had to do every day was an hour and a half? Wouldn't that set you free? Yeah, am I right? Although there is a slight catch and that is and that in order to get this all automated, as you saw in my video, you have to take a little bit of time once a week and get this all set up. You have to take everybody's books and you have to see where they're at. You have to go over their formal work and you have to kind of put it all together. And then you can put it on this sheet. Then every day, if you, if you will spend that little bit of time investing yourself, like on Sunday afternoon, the rest of the week should go pretty smoothly. Of course, you know, life happens, all right? But if you can do that, you're going to have much smoother sailing. And so I just really suggest this to you as a strategy. This is something that, you know, I wish I had learned it earlier on, but you can take advantage of my bad experience <laughs> and put it into positive use for you and your family. So if you know, let's let's retract. Let's let's go over this again. So what I'm suggesting is that you take an assignment sheet. Well, first off, first off, let's back up the truck. You have to have materials that you can automate, right? And if you're using the Charlotte Mason and you're using actual books to do the Charlotte Mason method, to do the Charlotte Mason method with, it's going to be more labor intensive on your part because you're going to have to find selections of prose and poetry, and you're going to, have to do all kinds of stuff. You know, go through hoops and upside down and everything. But there's an easier way that I found, and that is to use the McGuffey readers. And you can use the McGuffey readers with my lesson sheets or my lesson books. Now, my lesson sheets are for free download on my website. And all you have to do, now let me, for those who aren't familiar, let me show you a couple of things, just a second. So here's the original McGuffey readers. They're brown, and you can find these online. You can, and um, for free. But I bought these. I bought a whole set from Mott Media. I love them. And here is the second thing, which is the revised McGuffey's Reader. 
And so that's what those are. And by the way, I am seriously planning on doing separate videos on a lesson in each of these books using my lesson book, which is, this is one of the lesson books that I developed for these readers. And um, as you can see, this is just a sample of some of the pages. And each level is, um, it's, pro it's progressive. So in other words, you're going to have this, the, the lowest level is going to have lots of dotty lines and be very short and sweet to go along with the early um, McGuffey readers. So anyway, so that's, I automate that, okay? I automate that because I have certain things that the kids can do pretty much on their own except for maybe the dictation. And also at the beginning of the week, I will have to be filling in the words for them so that they can copy after me, the words and the copy work. So that's a little bit of labor, but you do it on Sunday, you have it done for the rest of the week. And I usually, especially with little kids, only do like one lesson a week. I might do two lessons a week, maybe. And so if you take a little time on Sunday afternoon, you can get that done really easy. You know, sit your kids in front of a movie. <laughs> you know, the horror of everything. Sit them in front of a good video, and then you can probably get it done. Or have Daddy take them on a nature walk or something like that. Something where that you can have a little bit of time to get it done. So um, that's that part of the automation. And here's another one. And this is the gentle grammar that I also um, developed based off of, uh, let's see, Long's language, my CC Long, I don't think that's called Long language, but anyway, that's what I called it before. The idea was to introduce grammar to children in a gentle way so that they could just, when they're first starting to read and write, my kids had not a clue even what a sentence was, much less than write two sentences. Like, what in the world does that mean? This book helps them to understand basic punctuation and capitalization, and it just takes them from the very beginnings and gradually leads them through so they can start writing complete sentences when they're doing their schoolwork. So that's something you can do. Then you can automate this. Each lesson is like 10 minutes, and you can do one a day, and it's really easy. And there are like four levels, I think. And it's really, really easy to do. So that's one thing, too. And also, something you can do, which you can use the raise arithmetic and you can go straight through those things. However, it's a little hard to automate those things to younger children simply because you have to copy from the book to something else. And little kids oftentimes kind of lose their way. So it's, it's just really hard for them. They kind of get lost and their, their numbers, they're not writing very well and so it's very frustrating. So one thing I do is I can use like the raise arithmetic or the the other ones that I, su I suggested, I don't have their names off the top of my head. I'll try to put it up here. <laughs> but you take those things and then you use them as a spine and then you can add other things like worksheets, etc. Right now what I am doing is I am actually using a modern uh, math textbook as my spine and then I'm adding in those other older maths as well as worksheets from mathdrills.com. And when I do that then I can kind of keep them going. I look at math not as grade levels, but um, starting at the very basics and then going up to pre-algebra. And then I just look at that as a continual stream. And it doesn't matter what it's supposed to be for each age. What I look at is where they are personally, each person, and I try to develop a program wrapped around what they need rather than what the grades say they should need. So that makes sense. But usually you can automate a lot of that stuff. Like if they're learning how to do multiplication, you can automate a lot of that. You can say, you know, practice your um, flashcards for five minutes or go through your stack of flashcards, you know, with your with, with a brother or sister. You know, you can use the old school house, me house methods where you can say, okay, you can put it on their assignment sheet. Do flashcards with so-and-so for the older child. So the old child knows, well, before I can check this off, I have to go do flashcards with my brother or sister. It can happen. Now, it depends on personalities. I know it. <laughs> have them sit in front of you. <laughs> Yeah, the green can happen. Make sure they are really separated in age. Usually works better. <laughs> but anyway, those are just some things that you can do just to try to autopilot your tools of learning and and some of your content and then leave a space for content that really enthuses you and unifies you and helps you to have a lot of fun together. So I hope that helps you. Hope it gives you more hours in each day. Less frustration, more joy. Always a good thing, right? So, hey, listen, I really appreciate all of your support. You're all so very sweet to me. So make sure and like and subscribe and click that bell. I love you. Bye-bye.